Another day, another commitment. This time, Alabama steals another one from deep in the heart of Texas. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Oh, uh, couldn't be better. Uh, what an exciting day. <laughs> it is an exciting day. One Jalen Hale, wide receiver from Texas, commits to the University of Alabama. It'd be weird if we started talking about somebody who didn't commit to Alabama and spent a whole segment on him. So let's go ahead and talk about him. He's a four-star national number 53 player, according to your site, on three. Um, he's the number 10 wide receiver prospect in the country and the number 10 player in Texas. This is a big get. Texas wanted him. Uh, Texas A&M wanted him. I, the, I see Georgia on his offer list. I don't know that Georgia was necessarily pursuing pursuing him very hard, but uh, I do know this. He's a heck of a player. Why don't you tell us about it? He is uh, what I like most about Hale. I've talked about this before, but just, I mean, it's just what stands to me about him is when you watch tape, he comes across as a possession receiver. And by that, I mean the ideal possession receiver, Luke, has a has a big body uh, and uses his body uh, like a rebounder. So he can he can sort of uh, use his body to gain position on the ball. A possession receiver makes the contested catch, knowing that he's got uh, a DB right in his face, but he still catches the ball consistently, even in that situation. And better yet, a possession receiver has a great – catch radius which means he's long with long arms and he's a big kid uh so so the quarterback has a large target and and Jalen Hale is all of those things which makes him just an ideal possession receiver which is great and you need those because when you sign a wide when you build a wide receiver core it's like building a basketball team you need a little bit of everything you need a, a guy that does this and a guy that does that and a role player and you also need a couple of stars well the thing about Jalen Hale which really makes him more of a star than a possession receiver is in addition to all of those things he does well as a possession receiver, he's fast. He he can get vertical. This is not a slow 4'8 guy at all. He's probably really more like a 4'4 guy. I mean, he can really stretch the field too. Um, I think he's raw. Charles Power, our, our, our rankings expert at, uh, at on three, kind of describes his game as a little raw, that's fine. That that means that that he can improve, which is really fun. I mean, that that's the exciting part. I mean, we probably haven't even seen this kid at his best. So uh, I, I, this is a big pickup. I think of all three receivers now in this class for Alabama, Hale, Benson, and Adams, Hale has the biggest upside, probably the most exciting get of the three, although I think Malik Benson may be Alabama's best receiver next season. But considering he's more of a, a, a one-and-done possibility, I think Hale is probably the biggest uh, pickup of the three. Yeah, and again, Alabama does beat out Texas for him, but Texas felt good at least last yep. night. There were a lot of Texas yep. moderators that felt like he would end up committing there. And then uh, late last night, they changed their tune. Uh, again, big pickup. And I know wide receiver is a spot right now where Alabama fans are desperate – to get back to the glory days of Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, uh, you know, all that crowd. So I, I don't know that that's going to necessarily come around. I mean, again, that was a generational thing. But another wide receiver who had a great article about written about him today on AL.com is Ryan Williams, a guy down in Sarah Land, Alabama, down in your neck of the woods. You've loved him for a while. What's hard to even, even fathom. Like in the article, it said this, and it didn't dawn on me, uh, but it makes total sense. He's only a sophomore. It was like 15-year-old Ryan Williams, and I was like, oh, my God, that guy's only 15 years old. 15. I mean, that's ridiculous. But he is he's going to be a, a thing. He's going to be five-star or borderline five-star. I don't think there's any doubt about it when, the, when his time comes. Right, Jimmy? Yeah, he has like – in his numbers right now, I mean, we're halfway through high school, right? I mean, literally halfway – Everybody's played four games or five games, 
in high school football, I think maybe this is the fifth game. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it might be a little different for everybody. But the point is, Ryan Williams already has like 600 yards receiving and like 10 touchdowns already. Uh, and, and Sarah Land's going to go deep in the playoffs. So this is not a team that's only going to play 10 games or 11 games. They're going to make the playoffs in advance. So the numbers he puts up as a 10th grader could be astronomical. Uh, yeah, I mean, it really – it's like a cold towel, you know, in the face. <laughs> when you, 15 years old, and he's dominating 6A football in Mobile. Uh, man, what an amazing kid. And, and, yeah, he's young. Heck, his dad is young. I was talking about this with Bone the other day on, at On3. Uh, Andrew uh, covered his dad's recruitment. I mean, that's how long Andrew's been doing it. And that's how young the dad is. Andrew covered his dad's recruitment when his dad chose Auburn over Alabama and others. And his dad is so young. His dad was a high school teammate of Rodney Hudson, who's still playing in the NFL. So uh, I'm very excited about Ryan Williams. And frankly, several other sophomores at Sarah Land including the quarterback, including another receiver, including the running back, including a defensive tackle. Uh, that's Sarah Land 10th grade class or something else. We're going to be talking about it here on uh, Locked on Bama for three years. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for making this your first listen when it comes to Alabama podcast. Thank you so much. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. You can see the little layover there at the bottom if you're watching this on YouTube. But we do have a new sponsor, and that new sponsor is is Nugenics. Uh, I know you've seen the advertisement uh, for them before. They've got, what, Frank Thomas and Doug Flutie, and uh, it, it's a great yeah, product. I'll, yep. I'm Nugenics, Nugenics Total Tea contains man-boosting key, key ingredients like Testafit. It has been validated in five clinical studies shown to boost free testosterone levels in men. Because Nugenic Total T boosts free testosterone that the aging process robs, you'll feel stronger, leaner, with more energy and drive, and more passion too. Your partner will notice the difference. While every product professes quality, many other products use generic ingredients that are often far less clinical grade. With Nugenics Total T, you get the same clinical potency levels used in trials. And Nugenics formulation is backed by 10 years of science and research. And look, I'm telling you, I like me some Frank Thomas. I like me some Doug Flutie. They're not going to lead you astray. Go get you some Nugenics. All you got to do is check, check them out. They've got Testafin in there. It's a big deal. Here's the offer. Now get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea when you text college to 231-231. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, the most powerful fat incinerator ever with key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast. This is absolutely free. Text college to 231-231. Text college to 231-231. Message and data rates may apply. Available at Nugenics dot com backslash terms hey one also day want to tell everybody hey one yeah. day let's uh let's uh write down the script from the uh frank thomas doug flutie commercial the famous one when they're on the uh, driving let's range act it out. and let's act it out we're gonna do this i'm down I mean, with it that make, it makes sense you'll be frank thomas and i'll be flutie we just have to I like uh, <laughs> we'll recruit a uh a, a third person to be the dude that goes Hey, aren't you Frank Thomas and Doug Flutie? As if an extremely famous large baseball player, an extremely famous small football player would just coincidentally be hitting balls at the same driving range. The, the same public like course it. driving range. Um, public course driving range. <laughs> but uh, I need to tell everybody about Alumni Hall, too. Look, I want you to go check out Ooh. Alumni Hall. Google Alumni Hall, Alabama. And their whole Alabama page comes up. They've got all this cool stuff. I'm telling you, they sent Jimmy and me a shirt. We appreciate them so much. Alumni Hall, go check them out. Please, please, please. You will love their stuff. You need some new Alabama gear. It's time to get some. Your old Alabama gear is old. It's raggedy. Go get you some new Alabama stuff that's kick butt. You can do it at Alumni Hall. I'm telling you, they got cool stuff. I've already ordered some stuff. They got Cutter and Buck uh, polos. They look fantastic. They got. I love the the new look of all these different uh, Alabama polos with the script A and whatever cool stuff. I also have my T-shirt that I've worn on this podcast before that has the old Alabama logo that I love so much that we all love so much that we all wish would come back. But uh, go to Alumni Hall. Just Google AlumniHall.com. 
uh, Alabama. And the Alabama site will come up. Each uh, school has their own little alumni hall site. So go check them out, alumni hall. All right, Jimmy, um, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the schedule that came out for 2023. Um, mm -hmm. This is uh, very interesting. Alabama's got uh, a tough road to hoe, if you ask me. I mean, uh, look, the, I was just on a radio station in Montgomery talking about this. And what's interesting, um, I'm trying to pull up feverishly this the schedule right now because uh, I had it set up to talk about something else. Um, but uh, here we go. Alabama's full football schedule. That was great podcasting right there by me. Um, you open up with Middle Tennessee, and then, of course, September 9th is the Texas game. That'll be a game day game. Everybody in the world will be there. Then uh, at South Florida, which we, you and I have both talked about in the past, that's genius. You get to go down to Tampa, do some recruiting, get a big win, play in Raymond James Stadium. It all works out. Okay. What's interesting, though, is the SEC schedule that's come out. You right. open up with Ole Miss at home. I'm, I mean, unless you want to consider Luke Altemeyer, I don't know if Jackson Dart comes back next year or not. I don't know what this – I don't even know if Ole Miss is going to have Lane Kiffin. He, we may face him at the end of the year playing coaching for Auburn. <laughs> I would be really surprised by that, but uh, I, I agree that I'm not sure who Ole Miss's quarterback is going to be when we play him this year. So, I, you know, whether it's going to be Dart or Altmeyer or D D D Ken some some dude named Kincaid, I think. Uh, I I don't know who, who their guy is this year, so I certainly am not going to guess as to who it's going to be next year. And, uh, yeah, Lane is a, a guy whose name will continue to appear on the short list of many coach openings. So, uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, that that that's a big wild card to me. Uh, Ole Miss, uh, though, I, I mean, I like our chances in Tuscaloosa better than Oxford. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, but, I, and again, we're going to be breaking in a lot of new talent, too. I mean, that's something everybody needs to remember. But, you know, as I was going through the schedule, it, it, it dawned on me that, man, everybody's going to be dealing with a new quarterback just about. Uh, Mississippi State certainly will be, and we play them September 30th. How many times in the history of Alabama football have we played Ole Miss and Mississippi State back-to-back? -back? I can't imagine that's, that's that many. It's, 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 and, it's like literally maybe never happened because I read uh, someone else's Twitter uh, came up with this hard-to-believe fact, but we played Mississippi State more than we've played anybody. I mean, we've, yep. we've played games against Mississippi State more than we've played any other school, including Auburn, and yet we have never, ever, 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 played Mississippi State in September. That's wild. So that, that is crazy, isn't it? That's wild. So yeah. we got a stretch where we play at Mississippi State, then at A&M. Now, here's the thing about at, at A&M. I know this year they don't look like world beaters. I hate that term, world beaters, because it's so hyperbolic. But anyway, I used it. Um, So at A&M next year, you know, this – that that incredible class they signed will be sophomores. So you have to think right. A&M will be better next year than they are this year. Then you welcome in Arkansas, who will be breaking in a new quarterback. Uh, then you welcome in Tennessee, who I assume will be breaking in a new quarterback. Then you have the bye week. Then you uh, – here's an uh, interesting two games. LSU at home, and I think that could be really, really tricky. Second year of Brian Kelly. Um, uh, Jaden Daniels will be back, I assume – um, it's, you never really know, but I assume he'll right. be back. And I, I think LSU will be good again. Um, and then at Kentucky. Now, they lose Will right. Levis. They'll lose uh, Cavassier Smoke. I assume they'll lose Rodriguez, who we had not even seen this year yet. But um, Mark Stoops, is he's put together a, a nice little foundation for that program. Now, I don't know if it's good or bad that we play them so late in the season. I, I would assume it's probably going to be – Good in the sense that, um, you know, maybe they're beat up a little bit. They don't have our depth, but it's bad in the sense that all this new these new guys they got to break in are going to be seasoned. Well, we play an East team on the road and an East team at home. And, you know, next year it's Tennessee at home and Kentucky on the road. This year it's Tennessee on the road and Vandy at home. I would argue, Luke, I mean, really, if you look at it, like I'd rather play Kentucky on the road than Tennessee, which we get this year. So, now, you know, the set, you know, obviously we're trading Vanderbilt for Kentucky for our rotational opponent. And that that's a an, a, an upgrade schedule wise. I mean, in terms of, of playing a competitive opponent. But uh, 
what strikes me about the schedule as a whole, and, and it has directly to do with this Kentucky game, Luke, is I think the home road situation in the SEC is a little easier for us next year. This year, we're playing all the good SEC teams on the road, you know, at Arkansas, at Ole Miss, at Tennessee. That's three of the four best teams in the league that aren't us or Georgia, you know. So uh, next year, I think we get some of these tougher SEC games at home, and uh, and, and that'll help us out. You know, and then um, now in 2024, and again, all this is probably up for grabs because the fact that we don't know when Oklahoma and Texas are officially coming in. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to get here in 2024, so this may throw a, a, a monkey wrench into everything. But in 2024, just for those curious, South Carolina joins the rotation from the East. Versus, we lose Vanderbilt and pick up South Carolina – play them in uh, Bryant Denny Stadium. So I, I just like to look ahead like that. But again, we it may change altogether and we may have tech, yeah, we yeah. may have Texas and Oklahoma. But that year we also go to Wisconsin to play a game. Yeah. And I'm going to be making that trip. By the way, one more uh, public service announcement. I've been to Alabama, Kentucky like three times in really? Lexington. It's awesome. It's a fun trip. I highly recommend everybody go. Um you been to football awesome. or basketball? I've been to both, but um I've been to football, I think, two times and basketball once. And both of them are just a lot of fun. The football is a lot better. I mean, it's it's just it, – it's it's not the best stadium in the world, there's no doubt. But, I mean, it's it's really colorful and fun. I just – I enjoyed going there. So, yeah, I would highly recommend everybody make that be their road trip. Um, next year, if you always plan one – at least one road trip a year like I do with some buddies. So, Jimmy, um, want to go ahead now – and and take another break and here's what i gotta do i gotta find my live read i gotta find it where to go here it is right here bet online it should should have been an easy one go to betonline.net it's fantastic you want to take the tide minus 40 this weekend go to betonline.net they got everything you need you can find all the latest odds news and scores at betonline.net official sponsor of all things locked on we appreciate them so much go check them out asap it's the best place to get your bet in. They've got everything you could possibly want from MMA to boxing to Major League Baseball to pro football. They, they got all these cool in-game things you can do. Go to betonline.net. You will love it. I promise you, you won't be wasting your money. In fact, you'll probably win a little money. I'm not saying you will because I can't guarantee stuff like that, but I'm saying you probably will. Probably. There's a maybe in there somewhere. Go check out betonline.net. We believe in you. We believe in you. Um. All right, Jimmy, I want to talk about now uh, some of the things Nick Saban said uh, in uh, Wednesday's press conference. Um, he's talked about Tyler Booker specifically. This is a guy you and I love. Um, here's a quote from Nick Saban on the freshman offensive lineman. He said, he's doing a good job for us. He's improving every game, every week, every practice. And that's really what we want him to focus on. He makes really good choices and decisions about how he goes about his work. He's a good person. He's got great character, competitive character, and he's improving. He can play with power, which is something that always is welcomed in the offensive line. And he's created competition at several positions. All those things are really assets for our team. Could not agree more I'm glad, you know, I was, again, I, I'm always on a radio station, ESPN, The Ticket, Montgomery on Wednesdays. And I was on there today, and, and they were talking about, you know, how concerned I am about the rest of the year, because this Alabama team certainly has shown its weaknesses. And I said, you know, we need we need a Mark Ingram type. We need a hype guy. We need a Mark Ingram type. We need or a few of the dogs that were on that 2016 team. Somebody that will get in the grill of other players when they're not doing right, or somebody that will get everybody geeked up. Mark Ingram is excited for every minute of every day. He just – he attack, he is carpe diem personified. You know, he always wants to – he's sitting on G, waiting on O. And, you know, here's the thing. Bryce Young, I consider him a leader, and I consider him maybe the best quarterback in Alabama history. But his heart rate never changes. Now, that's very good when it's a two-minute drill and we're down by two points, like, like Texas, right? Because he just didn't get – he's not worried about it. He's, he's got it. It's under control. The thing is, though, some of these other guys might need a little kick in the rear, and that's not his bag. That's Again, that's not a bad thing. Bryce Young is fabulous. I'm just saying we need a dude who everybody looks up to, and that is genuinely, genuinely, that's the key. Here's the new thing with, our, with the generation now. They just – they see right through phony. You can't be phony fired up. You know, I, 
I noticed something in the Auburn Penn State game. DJ James, who's down from your neck of the woods, um, who now is a defensive back for Auburn, transferred in from Oregon, right? Yep, that's right. Okay. Every single play that he was involved in, whether the pass was overthrown by 10 yards or he broke it up, or even if it was just a short catch and he made a tackle, he, he was like going nuts. He was fired up. And I thought, that's a little bit much. It looks like he's trying too hard to be fired up. You know, I've seen some other dudes. I think, boy, who was that? Um, who was the the pass rusher, Jeff, oh, that Auburn had a few years ago, number four, that had several sacks that always did the little, uh, you know, before you had getting a karate match prayer thing. What was his name? Jeff, um, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that guy was genuinely fired up all the time. He was Jeff Holland. Jeff Holland, yes. Jeffrey Holland, yeah. He was always fired up. Like, he was genuine as they can be. And so what I'm saying is you can tell the difference in the guys that are that like are completely genuine about this and the guys that are trying to manufacture a little bit. And again, I get what DJ James is doing. You're trying to build up everything. But my point is, like when you see somebody like Jeff Holland do it, they always back it up and they do it at the right time. And Alabama needs a dude like that. Maybe Tyler Booker can be that guy. Yeah, you know who uh, – maybe he can because – I was just – while you're talking about that, I'm going through the lineup in my head and, and trying to think of a guy with that personality. We just kind of run into a group where they're all – I mean, I hate using the word studious, but they're all sort of like that. I mean, Echior and Steen and Bryce and even Gibbs, uh, you know, Burton. They're just they, – they're great kids. They're just sort of quiet, all of them. Uh, uh, really, every – Dow Court's that way. I tell you who might be the most fiery one of the bunch on offense is probably J.C. Latham. But I'm sure he wouldn't feel comfortable being that guy. He's a true sophomore. He's one of the youngest guys in the lineup, and he's probably uncomfortable being that guy. But he's almost like the only one of the group that has that personality. So that is sort of interesting. Um, you know, as to Booker, uh what's so incredible is just the fact that he's in this position at this age. Our other true freshman offensive line starters are guys like Cam Robinson, Jonah Williams, Evan Neal. I mean, that's, that's the list he's joining. I should tell you how good this kid is. Then throw in the fact that we sort of needed those guys to come in and start. We weren't in sore need of an immediate starter. It might feel like it to, to some of you guys, but it's not true. Because look who, if Booker in truly becomes a starter, he's moving Echior, a three-year starter, out of the lineup, or Javion Cohen, who only started last year, but was thought of as not only a good young player, but a future NFL player. And basically, Booker's putting one of those guys on the bench, which is incredible. I think our other freshman starters, Neil and Cam and Jonah, weren't beaten out guys that we were necessarily really high on. So that's what's uh, really incredible about what Tyler Booker's doing. All right, buddy, that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Bama. We'll be back tomorrow with, um, I think, the, is tomorrow our predictions episode? I believe tomorrow is. was the predictions episode, and I have not picked out a winner in Alabama Vanderbilt. Okay. Well, I'm go ahead and sleep Alabama. on it, bro. I'm leaning Alabama. <laughs> Jimmy with an Alabama lean. Breaking news. Um, mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and uh, appreciate the follows. Appreciate the watch. Appreciate all you. Y'all are the best. Go to Alumni Hall, uh, Alabama. Go to Nugenics. Go to betonline.net. We appreciate all of you. Check out LinkedIn, everything. Do all, the, do all those things and we'll dance at your weddings individually. There we go. All right. <laughs> Roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.